Well, okay, here we're back. I was asked to do a video, so this is uh, RxB 2020, and uh, I released it yesterday, my mother's birthday. So that's done. So I just wanted to show you some of the, uh, the features here. First thing up is the screen. As you can, you can see, the screen comes up. It's um, it's the same menu it was before, but any key will jump you out of the menu. It automatically searches for disk one, and if it can't find it, it goes to disk two, disk three. It looks for the load program. So RxB is automatic. Once you press the key to get it started, it'll find load on your disk drives one to nine. I could have had it set up to search all the RAM disk too, but I didn't. Also, when you start up RxB, you could just press the uh, space bar and it goes to editor mode. This is a load program I wrote. If you want to see it, you know what's best. Wait a minute. Probably best if I go down here to um, just show you this way. It's probably better to load. Anyways, here's the load program. Now, this load program is created by another program that's written. It's called Loader. And this program creates a DV80 file that user uses. Now, I've already done a whole crap load of demos on user. Uh, some of the things have changed, but it still works the same way. And user created all the files you see here. All these files are created by one single user program. So, anyways, let's try a, this is the loaded pro, load program that I created, it creates. I'm just trying to be as brief as possible here because I've only got so much time to work on this. So, if you hit the space bar, it'll go to the next screen. It, you can have several screens of uh, programs, and I'm didn't count them right now, but here's an example of a, of a user program right here. Uh, when you use the loader program, it asks you what kind of program it is. And as you can see, users picking up and loading the program, and it creates a program, and it's creating a DV80 file right now, and it's also doing a loop. If you look at the program, you see that it's just doing a 4NX loop right here. And when it's done, it'll say, okay, it's going to go to the loader, if I remember correctly. But it takes a while to do that. And the program is the test program at the bottom. Yeah, it's going to the loader program. So now what it's doing is it's it loaded the loader program. And this program creates the, the load program that creates all these. It, what it does, it... it uh, it catalogs these files one at a time, and if it's a DV, if it is a uh, display variable file, it'll ask you if it's a batch file. If it's a program, it'll ask you if it's extended basic or EA. It'll load and run EAs also if you want to. And it'll also look at automatically, it, it figures out that if you have an internal variable 254 file, so let me move this over a little bit, or I just expand this. So if it's a variable 254 file, it knows it's extended basic, it'll just ignore it and load it into the list. So anyways, that's the loader program. You can also do this, call XB, and uh, that goes to the menu. We go here, it'll go to the load program again. This is what's in the package. Anyways, so I showed you the test user. So we push the space bar, we can go to another program. So let's say like the swap program. I've showed demos of this before, no distance in doing that. I've showed demos on this, I've showed demos on the sprite swap. So there's no sense in showing demos of the same thing over again. Because I have videos on all of these on my YouTube. And the links for the YouTube are in there, including the link to my channel. So there's not really anything we can do that you didn't already know. Um, on key's been demoed. Reverse motion's been demoed. Though I could probably do it again. All this does is reverse the motion of sprites. 
Uh, that's the command, call reverse motion, as you can see. You can do all of them if you want to at the same time. And we'll go back to the load program. And there we are. Uh, let's see if I can find a new one here that I haven't done before. As you can see, if you go up and down, it, it jumps to where you want. Uh, what's, what haven't we demoed before? Let's see, I demoed all these. Jeez. Oh, the magnify. That's a new one. Though I did a video on this. Uh, what it's doing now is just throwing up sprites on the screen, but now what you see is it's turning the, the magnification factor from 1 to 2. 1 is smaller sprite, sprites, regular spy sprites, and then 2 is upper sprites. As you can see, you can see lower and upper at the same time on the same screen. It has some features for some things you can do. Uh, the, the video I posted will actually show you more. Anyways. So, let's see, no, we did magnify. What else we got here? Um, chimes, the IO command. Well, I haven't done that in a long time. This is uh, the input output command talks to the input output chip on the TI. As you can see, what it does is it, it creates a crash program. But what the difference is it doesn't load it with a sound call of sounds. What it does is it puts it in VDP memory that you're not being used right now. So if I do a call IO to one, that's that's the the routine is one is for sound output. And 4096 is the address in VDP memory. So you can put this in your game and it wouldn't It would just do this whenever you press it to ask it to work and do this. Uh, the other one I have is uh, call see now old disk one. Uh, the other one is what is it uh, besides crash? So I had crash. What was the other one? Chimes. That's it. Chime or chimes? I think maybe I need to. Yeah, there we go. CH. I don't see it. I might have deleted some of these on accident. Well, let's see if we can do the. Uh, We'll just do this. We'll go to one, see if the load program will load it. So that was the crash. And it does it by the same reason that the uh, crash does, the chime should do the same thing. Oh, it's IO crash. That's why I got it wrong. So it's loading chimes. You've heard this before. And there's the program where it loads all the data into the VDP memory. But I think I loaded it a different address in this one. Yeah, I loaded it a different address. So this is like call IO, and it would be one again. And it's 8192, so you use a different VDP address. Still works. Um, that's the IO command. So we done with those. Let's see now. Well, there's inverse. If you have a uh, problem with videos flashing before your eyes, watch out. This was going to do it. Do that. You, you tell it the character that you want. Uh, like let's say like uh, let's say 65. There's the 65, and what it does is it tells you the uh, inverse. It inverses that character. So if we look at the program, 
pretty simple. All it does is it takes the character pattern of the file, it does a call inverse on that uh, that character, and it calls the character pattern of the inverse. So you can actually reverse the inverse. You can do the inverse of a character, and then also print out what that is in a simple program. There's only three lines of the program doing it. If you accept that, just like that tells you what character you're playing in. So let's say 32. It inverses the 32s. If you say, uh, let's say, uh, 34 inverses that. It shows the inverse of all of them. Anyways. I think you might notice also that I've changed the screen. Uh, 2015 had a black screen with white letters. And the problem was that it affected the performance of some extended basic programs. So I've gone to uh, black on cyan instead. And then of course when you're an editor, uh, RxB uses um, white on uh, blue. That's actually from GKXB. I just use the same thing. So then we also have inverse all. This is the one I was going to warn you about from the screen flashing. Right now it's inversing all characters. If we list out the program you get a better idea of what's going on. It inverses all the characters. But it has to go through the entire list, so it takes a while to do it. It works a lot better if it's just do a couple of characters at a time. So that's that. OK, um, what do we got next? In the inverse, inverse all. Uh, no sense in doing in it. Uh, H put and V put. These are. Um, think of display head. But the difference is that this uses the same row numbers and column numbers as a call horizontal character or call vertical character. And so the, the display head is stuck with 28 characters in the middle, sort of like print is. So you can't do things outside that, which is kind of a bad idea because then you have to go to a single character at a time. H put and V put actually do what eight display at does, but it does it horizontally or vertically on the entire screen. Also, it does strings or numbers. So you can do a call H put, and let's say uh, 24 of one, and we'll do like uh, six. As you can, it does the number, or I can call H put. So it works the same way as display at does. And we'll do like a test. So you can see it does the same thing, but it uses all the screen instead of just part of the screen. So it's a much better feature. It beats the heck out of uh, extended basic. I have a lot of programs that I've modified to use H put and V put instead of display at. It's quicker too and it takes less space to do the same thing because you don't need the, you know, the colon. I'm not going to go into that. Anyways, it, it, it saves space. I'll save. I was showed several times that you can do a um, smaller program using RxB for that reason. This is just X string. What it does is it just it uh, takes a string if I list it out. What it does is it converts numbers into strings because numbers take eight, eight bytes of memory and strings only take, well, you have one for the length and then you have an address of the string and then you have the uh, string itself. So you can do th three to four bytes what takes eight in a number. Actually it takes more than eight if you think about it because it has to have an address of where that number is. So numbers take up more space. Also, because they're floating point, they take up much space too, versus a string, which should take up less space to do the same thing, especially with integers. So this shows you how much space you save for just you know a, a list of numbers. <clears throat> okay. I was going to do a demo of the entire user program again, but it would take like three to five hours. I really don't feel like doing that stuff again. I already have the videos out there to do most of these commands. 
A few of them have changed, but not a lot of them. Um, let's see now. By the way, I have a thing called HGIT and H, uh, HGIT and VGIT. And that is the same thing as if you use a whole bunch of uh, Git characters. So, example, whoops. So what this does is it gets whatever is that, what's the address? Uh, a Git character would do 3A9A and then 310B, <clears throat> 311C, 312D. Now, also, I've modified Git character and see, in extended basic, you normally you go call, Git character, you go your row, your column, your, uh, and then your variable, right? Well, here's the problem. You have to use that uh, colon to do another one. In RxB, you can just do another row, another column, and another variable. So it's a much better design. Anyways, the hput and hget and hvget are, they get the characters on the screen. So if you look what we got up here, it says call character A. So if we print A, B, C, D, like it did with the good characters, that what you got. 32, 33 to 32. Now, if we do the uh, hget, we just have X dollar sign. That's the one I put it into. Whoops. Print X dollar sign. And print win X dollar sign. So it's four. If we run the program again, it should grab something on the screen. Yeah, it pretty okay. I got it coming off the back of the screen. So that's what that that was. You kind of horse here, and I don't know why. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, sorry. So what else we got here? We got um, distance is pretty much like get character. You can you can. Add in more more distances. I've changed a lot of these commands. Uh, color all. Oh, how about this one? This is kind of a freaky program. Uh, if you have a problem with like diabetes and or whatever you call it when you can't see the flashing screen, turn your eyes away. All this does is just doing all the colors. And you want to see what the program does and how it works. It's just really simple. It's just doing a, a four and x loop. Or a, if z equals 1 to 50, then it just goes back to that line. But it's call color all random, it random colors. That's all it does. All these sample programs are provided by the user, but I also provide you a, um, at the same time, I also provide you a list of all the programs. It puts them all on disk one. Also, I think four games that I rewrote. Not good games, just ones that I found easy to do. <clears throat> so let's see now we got uh, character set all and character set all. Just a different version. The, the character set all is like the normal character set but it's been modified slightly by RxB. Um, we'll just run through it and show you. We'll set all the characters from zero all the way up, and then it shows you when they're reset. That's the character set all. Now, if you run the other one, uh, run the other one is character set all, that one. Yeah, there we go. Is, it's just a different version of it. Excuse me. Let me show you the difference right here. Well, first off, let's run this and we'll see it. It's just doing more characters. And as you can see, it does all of them. XB resets 32. See, the normal XB resets 32 to 95. Character set all reset, resets 30 from the cursor all the way up to 159. So that's the difference. But this is the character set program. Right here, you can see it. And the other one is, I think, is basically a duplicate of it. It's kind of different. 
it does a little bit different thing. It just randomly picks numbers or letters. Anyways, that's that one. So what do we got left here? We got um, it's not character. This one is uh, it just repeats the command after the comma. I mean, it already did that extended basic, but you can do the all. And so the feature is all. So if we run the program, it, you can do it all on all characters. You make all characters exactly the same. So say if you wanted to blank the screen, you can do a conquer all. It looks a little bit different than a call clear. Or if you want to do just the uh, just a, a special effects, it works. Um, catalog. RxB has call catalog, which is call cat. Let's say if we want to do seven or call cat. Also directory, there's one called directory that does exactly the same thing. We'll say six. And this is what's on six right now in my classic 99. And uh, I modify it slightly. It doesn't show you the size of the disk anymore because it wasn't working properly with hard drives because different hard drives have different features and so I got tired of trying to fix everything. So I just took that out. It does a directory. It does what you want. Let's see, you know, uh, old disk one. We got one called call files. I did a demo on this, several videos now, I think two. All this basically does is it does call files. So this one in particular is call file zero. So if we do, in RxB right now, if we do size, watch this. That's different, isn't it? Uh, there's a demo on my uh, memory manager. Uh, RxB has a built in stack control, you control the stack of the VDP memory and you can control the RAM addresses in the where the extended basic program goes on my memory manager. I've got like four videos on this so far. But anyways, uh, if I run this program, uh, have you ever seen that much memory before? 2488. So if we go call files uh, three and do a size. Oops, I have to do a new first. There it is. No, I guess it didn't. Call files zero. There you go. Two four eight eight. Yeah. So if we have a call files, let's say fifteen. So yeah, it affects the memory. So call files three is I was looking at RAM, not, not the VP memory. I was screwing up. So there it is. It's now it's at one one oh seven two. Did we get that one? There it is. Okay. So anyway, so you have a memory manager too. Um, I guess I could go do this. I wanted to show you the, the drive thing where it, it, if you don't do anything, it just sits here at disk one for quite a while. I should probably lower the amount of time that it does this. But I just expected people to hit the space bar or some key and it would start loading. So it found the load program on disk one. And there it is. But if you delete the load program, if we do that, this is what happened to me. I screwed up. So delete the load program. And it'll load. It'll it start it'll look for load on disk one first. It starts with one, then it goes to the next one. It just keeps on going. So I'll give you a simple demo of that. So there it goes. It's searching one of the the nine disk drives, one through nine. It's not that slow on classic nine. It's a little slower on a regular drive. So that's a demo of what I've got so far. I don't know how long this video is. I'm going to cut it short right now to find out. But this is the first video that I'll do. I'll start doing more of them for you guys uh, shortly.